Hello everyone, my name is Arthur and today I'm going to talk about a topic that maybe like 90% of you guys don't give a shit about or don't care even a bit about and that is how do you get out of Herald or how do you advance from the Herald rank. Okay, so right now you might be wondering like who am I to talk, why should you listen to me? Well, I think the main thing that kind of separates me from everyone else getting out of Herald, even though I haven't seen many guides of that is that I've been there for uh, quite a while and I've also had to grind my way up through it uh, through Herald and past Guardian and into Crusader so before we start I have to go through a couple of points this video will be split into five parts or actually five different videos but we'll get to that later hard support, soft support, off lane, mid lane and safe lane the timestamps are on the screen, oh wait, no, they aren't, uh, I'll be releasing the vid separate videos later on. But yeah, I do recommend you watch all the videos and through all the content because some tips for like hard support also applies to soft support and vice versa. Okay, to start off with, uh, I wanna go over like 6 general points that you need to climb out of Herald. And further okay number one point uh, and that is you won't get a hundred percent win rate this was like the longest concept to understand for me uh, when I was new uh, so I feel like it's important to address it early and you might have like seen some smurf smurfs get close to 100% win rate before but yeah let me tell you before you even reach 70% you'll most likely be way out of Herald a good win rate in my opinion is to aim for like 60%, that's what I've done. That will gain you like an average of 6 MMR a game, which might sound like nothing, but after like, yeah, it will a maximum take 130 games with 6 MMR a game, and you'll be out of Herald. Okay, point number two, and that is don't blame your team. Um, if you're in Herald, you're in Herald for a reason. Uh, will you have unwinnable games because of your team? Yes, even more as support, but yeah. Uh, and will these games be common? Eh, not really. You'll have uh, usually pretty fair games. And I'll uh, address this more uh, in the hard support category, since it's the role where it's like the easiest to blame your team. But anyways, to summarize, people are gonna like have around the same skill and win rate as you and you will statistically get as many unfair wins as unfair losses even though it might not seem to it, uh, seem like it due to a little thing called the negativity bias Okay, point number 3 Don't worry about going party or going solo or anything like that Going party can be great since your learning environment and teammates become a lot more stable but you know, in general the reduced MMR gain kind of balances this out I personally prefer solo most of the time, uh, yeah, even though I play support. Just because I love like meeting new people and yeah, there are some bad apples, but usually you can get with some pretty chill people. This is not all. This has not always been the case though, uh, since I play with a ton of different players um, in party queue during my clan. I would say like 60% of my ranked games were solo and rest in party. But I think like end ratio is fine. Um, although I do recommend you at least try part Q from time to time if you're feeling frustrated with your teammates or the randomness. Okay, number four, and this might actually surprise you a bit. Uh, I recommend joining a community slash getting a coach. And honestly, this has been the one of the most useful things I've learned. And first of all, you'll just be like humbled by people better than you telling you what you can improve and guide you through your games a bit and you know it also helps a bit mentally knowing that you're part of a community when climbing since you can talk about your games ideas and usually get them confirmed by a better player and if you're lucky enough you can even get like training plans and programs from coaches i'll link a great one in the description where i usually hang out you can just feel free to ping me there or you know, if you have any questions or want help, and I'll be glad to help. 
Uh, and you know, there are also way more qualified people there than me, if that's what you're looking for. Okay, number five. Climbing, uh, climbing from Herald to Guardian is not about learning to master hero or drafting or late game or even like mid game. Maybe lane stage, but I'll get to that. Um, it's ma mainly about like fixing your fundamental mistakes in the early, mid, and late game. So what do I mean like by that? Um, you know, if if you get all the basics down to an all right level and just don't miss out on a, any like key parts. You'll get out of Herald in no time. Okay, so number six, and honestly, this is the most important one, and that is just enjoy the game. Just do what you enjoy. When I started playing Meepo in like the low Guardian, I was told like multiple times that I should just try to stay away from complex heroes. But you know, if you enjoy something, just do it. Just play it. Your MMR might suffer a bit when you start with a complex hero. But I still recommend like taking that fall, since they're usually insanely strong with tons of practice. Uh, plus, they can teach like super important game mechanics like micromanaging and farming patterns. That being said, let's get on into the actual meat of the video. Okay, hard support. Let's. Uh, this is uh, my favorite role. I think it has been for a while. I've probably dabbled a bit into soft support recently, but. Otherwise, hard support is the role that I'm the most experienced with. So, I'll start with that one. Okay, so, I'll just go over some basics quickly. Uh, as you might know, hard support is the post 5 role, and that means you're the last in farming priority. So, I would say hard support fits someone. Uh, I think a hard support is a pretty good role for beginners, because the main thing is just uh, like, don't feed it necessarily and get good at causing spells but anyways let's get to this replay and just a guide in general for herald, herald players okay early game so what should you do in terms of items well um, most guides honestly like work fine like rivalry or immortal faith uh, you should still like get at least two sets of regen which is, clear, uh, which is a healing salve or tango and preferably a mango clarity depending on your hero a center can be nice but it isn't really a must if you have uh, money left uh, then save up for a wand or get a couple of branches uh, I would usually recommend if you are more active like support which you should be to get a couple of branches instead of a wand or you can actually get a wand later but anyways, now that you have bought your items, you're, it's time for the laning stage. Okay, for bounties, uh, I would recommend standing on high ground as long as possible. Uh, I mean, if your carry is strong like Urza or Juggernaut, then you can probably pressure the bounties a bit. But don't go for two bounties unless you've gotten like an early kill at least. So, stay out of creep aggro is another insanely important point, and that's basically just stay out of uh, the creeps aggro range which, which is like maybe two players wide, three players wide uh, when you right click the enemy which you should be doing a lot if you're playing hard support and yeah just stay out of the creep range you'll know you have succeeded if the creeps just continue doing what they're doing but if they turn around and start running at you you haven't uh, stayed out of the creep aggro okay and also if you're a ranged hero you can you should usually try to rightly to weakest enemy. And well, what do I mean by that? It's not always the support. Uh, it's basically whoever has the least armor or the least region, or who's who's more vulnerable to kills. So, example in a lane with maybe Slark and Witch Doctor, you should probably try to harass the Witch Doctor out of lane because you're not gonna get a kill on Slark, and if it hits level six. Yeah, he's just gonna region up all the damage you do. Okay, so yeah, if the enemy has a spell spammer like Skyroth Mage or Bristleback or Bat Rider, just get a wand as soon as possible because yeah, it will uh, be profitable in the long run. And yeah, consider upgrading it as well after you get boots. 
So, if the lane is super active, you can get some salves, but if not, if it's stale, go for some tangos uh, when your regen starts uh, getting low. And by regen, I don't mean your health, that's the important part. Regen, when, when you have like one or two tangos left, immediately buy more. Um, yeah, but if there's not much kill potential and the lane is shield, just go with stack the small camp at 155 by attacking them and then moving back out to the lane. If your lane then moves too far forward, you can pull it at X, uh, at like um, uh, 15 above or 15, uh, 15 seconds after uh, like 5 minutes or 15 seconds before 5 minutes. Um, Here's a tip from an immortal coach that I heard, had earlier, and that is don't yep. fucking pull if the camp is not stacked. This will make it so that your next creep wave will have twice the creeps, which is like, it's the opposite effect of what you usually want to do during the laning stage. And unless you have like a troll or someone that can take early towers, it's really det detrimental for the core. Okay, but let's talk about night time. Right before night time, you should try to secure at least one bounty. If you plan on ganking the mid, which you should do if you have a good ganking here like Witch Doctor and your lane is stagnant, then feel free to place a ward to allow your safe lane to be safer from ganks. When the clock hits 5.00, you wanna be standing right by the river bounty to quickly grab it. Don't wait until it's 5 to go there, because then the offlaner is gonna get it. If you decide not to gank, then it's card time. Cards will come uh, will be coming in the next creep wave after bounties, allowing you to push the enemy tower if the enemy is not doing the same. And this is a lot harder for the safe laner than the off laner, so if the enemy is also trying to push, you should probably just focus on defending the tower instead of the attacking. If the enemy is diving your tower without creeps or very few, go for the kill and try to stun them. I've seen this mistake be, in, be done like a million times and because most heroes diving the tier 1 towers before like level 6, they are going to die. Um, just try to stun them again and try to kill them. Um, because yeah, Forcing them to die early on can make a huge difference for the outcome of the game. And unless they have a hero like Timber Saw, then you might not want to go too hard in for the kill. Okay, mid game. Now is the time, in my opinion, where the fun part begins. Your carry should be fairly self sufficient now, so you can start TPing and rotate into other lanes. If your offlane is pushing or has some kill potential, meaning the enemy is low on health and you have someone that can catch them, then feel free to TP there. Here is uh, kind of where the hard support role starts taking its form in my opinion, in the form of warding. In my opinion, there are only like two ways to ward. The first and the obvious way is just by placing down a normal observer ward and maybe a sent ward if it's uh, aggressive. The second is just simply standing in areas where the enemy might approach. This is an insane tip as well, uh, because if you just stand where you think the enemy is gonna come from, then you are basically guaranteeing your other teammates that they're like safe. And you're also really close to your teammates if they need help, or if you need help. But if you have a core that had a great lane, like Let's say you have an Ursa or Troll or someone and is ready to go for some kills, then go and play with them. Just run around the map, smoke, and you know, don't uh, try to play with your hardcore friend who's just jungling all the game and or just laning. Uh, you know, try to be active and go with the mid or offlane or even soft support if it's strong enough. And you know, try to pressure them, let me take a bit of maybe get some kills. You know, try to just be active and look around the map and yeah, I mean if you're playing with a meeper that goes on a rampage or a husker that's had a really good lane you just play with them don't like don't stick to one person is what I'm saying this is some more advanced stuff but if you notice a weakness in the enemy draft that you can exploit like you're playing lich against a uh, meepo then just feel free to bully them constantly 
because uh, yeah, if they switch lanes, let's say the Miku goes top, then just do the same. Just like follow them around them, just make their game a living hell. That's kind of your job as a support. Okay, here's the thing. Uh, I could like try to explain positioning and try to explain each hard support uh, role in every fight, but in the end, like it's mainly about pure experience. You need to be conscious of where you're located in the fight and what spells you're using. If the early game was even, then the game is most likely gonna be decided in the mid game fights. So it's really important to like gain the advantage here. And as a hard support, I don't think you can actually, at least not when you're in a hurl, get good at a hero with less than 5 or 10 games. So Honestly, I hate to say this, but I really recommend spamming hero for a bit. It will like give you a new perspective, and it might help your MMR a bit. And you can uh, use more variety later, I guess. Uh, but if not, that's fine as well. Uh, variety has worked for some people that I know, but generally, spamming can like speed up the process quite a lot. But anyways, you need to ask yourself questions like How can I have impact? Is it trying to help your course or is it trying to disable a single enemy? Or do you need like any spells for certain situations? Like Monkey King might save his boundless strike for a Bane ult to be able to cancel it. Or do you just like want to use your spells as early as possible? Oh, also a footnote about that. I try to always use like at least most of your spells, especially ults in teamfights. Because yeah, you're somewhat useless as a support since your HP and right click is basically nothing if you don't use your spells no, with, with some exceptions. Okay, anyways, these are the questions like that you need to ask yourself in lane or oh, not in lane in the mid game fights. Okay, finally, let's talk about the late game. If the game goes late, there's one priority that you should always have, like after maybe 30 minutes, depending on how the game goes, and that is always have buyback. I can't explain like how many games I won and lost because people don't have buyback. Always have buyback that game, and if you're like, if you're not that good at maths and want to buy an item but don't know if you're not gonna get it. Hold on control alt and click your gold. Then it will be displayed in chat how much gold you need for that item and buyback. Control and alt and click on your gold. Okay. Here comes the second most important thing. If you get like let's say you get an important kill or two, like that happens, but the enemy the enemy will, the enemy will get a couple of kills, you will get a couple of kills. Well, then you need to take an objective. That's the difference like between winning and not. If your team isn't near like any towers or creeps are way too far back, just go get Roshan. Just do something during these like 50 seconds that the enemy is weaker than you. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about the late game and support. It's pretty much the same as mid game, generally. Uh, in my opinion, uh, things start to become a lot more fun since you actually got them some items, and you know, it's it's really interesting to see because it becomes less about farming and more about mechanics. And you know, if you are playing hard supports, you're gonna care a lot about mechanics and positioning. But anyways, when I started this project, I thought it would just like go over all the roles in one, one video. But I realized that it's gonna take, take like more than an hour. So yeah, you'll have to just wait for the other roles. And um, yeah, before I go, I just wanna thank Hellfire for learning out a couple of replays that I could analyze and use as background footage. So yeah, if you have any questions or want help, I can even go into voice chat a bit with you if you want to. Then just join the Discord in the description. And ping me. I guess. Well, anyways, thanks a ton for watching. This project has like been the most fun for me in a while, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna disband the Terraria series. I'm feeling motivated enough to like do some actual content now. But yeah, I'll see you next week with soft support, and yeah, don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see that. Bye.